Dear students, good morning. Let us see the problem on the Hartnell Governor. Okay. The Hartnell Governor having a central sleeve spring. Okay. And the two right angle bell crank levers. Okay. That means levers. And moves between 290 RPM and 310 RPM. That means they are given the N1 and N2. So from N1, we can find out the omega 1, that is 2 phi N by 60. Similarly, for N2, omega 2, 2 phi N2 by 60. Okay. Then for a sleeve lift of 15 mm, sleeve lift, they are given the H value, sleeve lift 15 mm. The sleeve arms and the ball arms are 80 mm and 120 mm respectively. Here the sleeve arms are denoted by by okay, that is 80 mm, 0 0.08 meters. And the ball arms, ball arms, that is 120 mm denoted by x value. The levers are pivoted at 120 mm from the governor axis. Okay. These are the bell crank levers, as I told you, bell crank levers. This bell crank levers. Okay, here, this bell crank levers are pivoted at 120 mm from the governor axis. This is the governor axis. This is the governor axis. This is the east position and this is the east position. Closed position. So from this governor axis, we have a 120 mm from the governor axis. And the mass of each ball is 2.5 kg. Mass of each one is 2.5 kg. Okay. Mass of each ball is 2.5 kg. That means given the mass is m. The ball arms are parallel to the governor axis at the lowest equilibrium speed. They have mentioned that the ball arms are parallel to the governor axis. Actually, this is the minimum position for the Hartnell governor and this is the maximum position or highest position. Actually, it is having some inclination, these arms. But in the problem they mentioned that the ball arms are parallel to the governor axis at the lowest equilibrium speed of being, which is the governor axis. So we have to take this line should be parallel to this line. Okay, but actual it is in an inclination. Okay, you have to take this as a parallel to the axis. Determine the loads on the string at the lowest and highest equilibrium speeds. It means you have to find out the loads. It means spring force. Spring force. Okay, you have to find out at initial and final or minimum and maximum position. Okay. Similarly, second one, stiffness of the string. You have to find out the stiffness. Okay. So this is the data. So let us once compare the Minimum positions. See here. This is the actual case. Okay. This is the based on the condition of the problem. Okay. Here. Actually, this is having some inflation. I'm having. But here, that is rotating like this. Then it comes to parallel to the to a parallel to So from this, see, if it is comes to this direction, okay, here R and R1 both should be equal. R and R1. Because this line is comes to here. 
Okay. And similarly, x and x one, x and x one, also same. Okay. Remaining all are same. Okay. G plus s one by two. G plus c. This remains same. And we have a y. Okay. Now let us come here. These are the two. This is the initial position and this is the sorry, lowest position. This is the highest position. Okay. So based on this figure, okay, here R and R1 both are equal. And this is the x value, direct x value, 120 mm. This is by 80 mm. This is 120. This is the based, based on the given data. Here, here given the h value of pin mm. Okay, that's all the okay. First one you have to find out the loads on the spring. That means S1 and S2. Okay. So here from this we have R is equal to R1, that is 120 mm. Means 0 0.12 meter. As you know, the, for the lowest position, we have a centripetal force formula at the minimum speed, that is mr1 omega 1 scale. Okay, we know our m value, r value, and omega value. You can see it. It's the r1 value, and this is the omega 1 value. Okay. Similarly, let us find for n2 value. Here, find out Fc2, we need R2 value. Find out Fc2, we need R2. For that, here, C this one. Not C this way, not this one. So from this figure, you can write here, here, and here. Both are having the same again, but I am same again. So you can write h by y is equal to h by y is equal to opposite by hypotenuse. Similarly, here, here the difference is r2 minus r or r2 minus r1 both are same. Okay, by x value, so opposite by hypotenuse, both are having same angle. So you can write h by y is equal to r2 minus r1 by x. So from this, you can write this equation. So h is equal to y into y into r2 minus r1 by x. Okay, I want r2 value. Okay, so h into y by x plus r1. This is the simplified form for the r2 value. Okay. So now, if you have already R1 value, that is 0 0.12, and H value, they are given 15 mm, so 0 0.015 meters, and X by Y, okay, they are given the X and Y values, see, okay, X and Y values, this is the ball arm, and this is the leave arms. Okay. Now, you can easily find out the FC2, that is the M, R mega scale, that means M R2 mega scale. Okay. Like that, you can find out very easy. Now, you have to find out the S1 and S2. So, for that, neglect obligatory effect. Okay. You should not mention anything. So, you have to neglect the obliquity effect. Okay. See, let's see this figure. So, from this figure, this way. Here, mg plus s1 by 2. Okay. Let us consider the moments. Okay. So, it's load into parapenetral distance. It's load into parapenetral distance. That means mg plus s1 by 2 into s1. Okay. Is here equal to here fc1 into this distance. fc1 into x. Here they are taking moments about this particular point. Okay. 
here this is acting downward and this so this is in clockwise direction and here is one in anti clockwise okay so you can see here so here this load into this distance acting anti clockwise direction and here this load into this distance Treating the direction. Okay, one is clockwise and one is anti-clockwise. So that's why this is the relation. Okay. Both moments, opposite moments are equal to this. I mean, anti-clockwise moments are equal to clockwise moments. Okay, based on that. I have taken this equation. Now from this equation, I want mg plus s1. So 2 into fc1 by x by y. Okay. So you know fc1 value already and x1 by values. And you know already m and g value also. So here you can substitute. After substitution, you will get the HD value. You can see the data. Actually, in this problem, they are not given the capital M value. That is the mass of the sleeve. Okay. They are given, you have to consider. They are not given. No need to consider. So you have to take as zero value. They are given only mass of the bonds. They are not given the weight of the speed. So that's why you have to take that value as mass zero. So then you will get H2 value directly. Okay, so okay. This is the This is the sun value. It's the sun value from this equation. Okay. Similarly, for highest position, our highest position, this is for minimum lowest position. So compare this. Okay. In case of S1, we have S2. In case of F2, we have F2. So similar to this equation. Okay. So then we have F2 to form a value that is 376. We have x by y values, then we get the s2 value that is number 128. It's not s1, s2. Okay, like that, you have to find s1 s2 values. These two are the spring forces. Okay, next one. Next one, they're asking the stiffness of the spring. Stiffness of the spring, as you know. Stiffness S is the load, load for unit deflection. Here load is the spring force. And unit deflection is the sleeve lift. That is H. So capital S by capital H. Here you have to take the difference of spring forces. That is S2 minus S1. Here S2 is the, here not S1, this is S2, double one to eight. The S1 is 831. So double one to eight minus 831 by H value, sleeve lift 15. And you will get the stiffness. It's not in part. Okay. Like that, you have to Okay. So, without knowing the derivation, okay, by using simple formula, you can easily find out these values. Okay. This is a very important problem. Okay. Very well. 